methylmercuries is uh, being conjugated with glutathione. We're going to talk more about the glutathione system, as I said. And it's moving out through uh, the liver and going into the bile and moving into the intestines. Now, uh, there's a real trick here because you've got methylmercury glutathione. Glutathione is made up of cysteine, glutamate, and glycine. I said methylmercury cysteine is the way that you absorb it. Well, uh, you have all of these proteins for breaking down glutathione back into its component parts. So methylmercury glutathione is shot out in the bile. It breaks down very quickly to methylmercury cysteine, which then is reabsorbed and goes back in. So that's a drag. Uh, and that's called the enterohepatics uh, cycle. Uh, a lot of the use of binding agents in the gut uh, often uh, people talk about mobilizers and binders. Uh, the binders are for in, uh, interrupting the enterohepatic uh, circulation so that you don't keep recirculating this. So inorganic mercury, how does inorganic mercury go out? Well, some of it is going out glutathione pathways into the gut, and uh, other parts of it are going out through the kidneys. So it's got two routes out. Transport of mercury into the body, uh, as I said, elemental mercury, 80% uptake through the lungs as elemental mercury crosses the blood-brain uh, barrier. Uh, though if you eat it, you have very moderate uptake through your intestines. Uh, when it's as a bulk metal, it's not, it's not absorbing. When it's broken off into little monoatoms as a gas, it absorbs very well. Uh, inorganic mer mercury, very poor uptake through the intestines. And so we think, oh, okay, well, we're, we're oxidizing all of this mercury to a salt in our mouth. We're swallowing it. Maybe that's not that bad. Well, you have some uptake through the gut, and you're swallowing a lot. But the real problem with the inorganic mercury is its effect on the lining of the gut. Uh, inorganic mercury does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So as an inorganic mercury form in your blood, it's not going across the blood-brain barrier, uh, but the, the kidneys, liver, and the gut are a big issue. Uh, methylmercury, 95% uptake uh, across the intestines, good mobility, crosses the blood-brain barrier. Ethylmercury, obviously 100% uh, absorption, very good mobility as ethylmercury, breaks down to inorganic mercury wherever it lands, and then it's not very mobile. Transformations of mercury. So mercury is jumping back and forth between different forms. So uh, the amalgam is oxidizing a rusting type of reaction to inorganic mercury. Uh, in the saliva, it's also doing this in the blood and tissues from the uh, inhaled elemental mercury. The inorganic mercury can reduce back to elemental mercury in the intestines. Inorganic mercury can be methylated into the intestines. So now you're swallowing all this inorganic mercury that you don't absorb well. You're biomethylating it to a form that you do absorb well. I have found vegans with, with fairly high methylmercury levels in their blood. Methylmercury is breaking down a demethylation into inorganic mercury uh, in the intestines, in the tissues. Uh, people with high uh, methylmercury levels from eating a lot of fish, if they have a lot of oxidative activity, and if their kidneys aren't working very good, you're going to end up with a lot of inorganic mercury buildup, even though they don't have amalgams. Uh, ethylmercury, as I've said repeatedly, breaks down to inorganic mercury. Targets of the mercury forms. Uh, Brain, central nervous system is, is a very classic one. Kidney, nephrotoxicity is a very classic one. Liver, uh, you, you, you do have a lot of liver toxicity issues with mercury. Uh, heart, uh, there's, uh, there was one study about uh, idiopathic dilative cardiomyopathy, uh, and they found uh, astronomical mercury levels in the heart. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to work uh, out exactly why that happens. One of the big problems that you find uh, when, when we talk a little bit about mercury symptoms, you'll see that they, they run the gamut and they're really hard to pin down. Uh, one of the things you find quite often, especially in women, is glandular issues. The pituitary is a very strong target for mercury and the thyroid is as well. There's a very strong dysregulation of uh, thyroid chemistry that goes on. And once you've done that, really you've just affected all of the glandular system uh, by hitting the pituitary and the thyroid. Uh, you'll often find from the pituitary dysregulation things like polycystic ovarian uh, uh, problems uh, syndrome. 
Okay, so the heart of the toxicity, and uh, fortunately, uh, Jim Biddle has uh, talked a lot about uh, the binding that goes on, uh, and, and he talked about the sort of the soft metals versus the heavy metals. Uh, down in the bottom right hand of the uh, periodic table, you have what are called the soft metals. These form these covalent associations uh, with ligands, especially sulfur proteins. Uh, or sulfur, reduced sulfur groups on proteins. And this is a big, big deal uh, because enzymes, uh, as he showed, enzymes are holding particular metals in place mostly by thiol groups, like cysteine residues are wrapped around a zinc, they're wrapped around a copper, uh, a molybdenum, and they're shuttling electrons back and forth, catalyzing reactions uh, that are controlled by the enzyme. And uh, as Jim pointed out, mercury comes in. Mercury has millions to billions fold higher affinity for the sulfhydro group, groups than, say, a zinc does. So this is a very big deal. You, you've displaced the zinc. You've killed the enzyme. Uh, but that's not the only place that the uh, sulfur proteins are active. Redox proteins, glutathione, is a sulfur protein. Thyroidoxin is a very important sulfur protein. Uh, and membranes. Membranes are coated uh, with uh, sulfhydro groups quite often, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about what happens when you bind to those. So inappropriate binding, uh, binding in the wrong place. They can also bind to amine groups. Uh, picture uh, a big protein. You've got a couple of cysteine residues on that protein. The conformation or the shape of the protein is key to the function. So now mercury comes in, it grabs one cysteine over there, it grabs one cysteine here, yanks on them, you've changed the shape or the conformation of the protein, and you've altered uh, the effectiveness of the protein. So that's all under inappropriate binding. Oxidative damage, uh, mercury is very good for catalyzing uh, reductive oxygen species formation. Uh, sometimes it's causing it... Uh, uh, you're, it's causing your cells to produce it. Sometimes it's catalyzing the effect itself. Uh, Dr. Haley is going to talk more about oxidative damage later, and I, I won't talk uh, quite as much about that. Uh, there was, uh, oh, I have this name in here, Paranandi from an IOMT talk. Uh, he does a lot of work on lipids and thiols in membranes and uh, downstream problems that happen when the mercury docks on the thiols and the membranes in the epithelia, especially the epithelia of, uh, of the vasculature. Let me see if I have a slide in here. Okay, yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, as we've said a couple of times, it's the reduced sulfur groups. So that R is any group that could be an amino acid. It could be a whole protein. And you have that uh, sulfur and a hydrogen next to it. That's called a sulfhydryl group. And what happens is that the mercury replaces the proton, kicks the proton off, and so now mercury is bound to the sulfhydryl, and you're releasing protons. You have local acidification wherever that happens, as, uh, as well as the change in, in, uh, in conformation or activity of the, of the protein there. Uh, as I said, enzymes are used to anchor the normal proteins. Now, I said when, when mercury binds to a membrane, there's, there's, uh, there's problems that, that happen. In fact, when mercury binds to sulfhydro groups on the membranes of the epithelia, you catalyze an auto-oxidation of the membrane. You actually bring in uh, a phospholipase and destroy part of the membrane there to get that mercury alpha that. 